Lucy and I am back with part 13 of the Pomegranates. So in this part, we are going to be playing as Tasman for the day. I thought that would be a really interesting twist to everything. I can't imagine that Tasman is too happy about what's been going on with Jessica Mortray recently and how Jessica Mortray has been sabotaging her. So she's actually by herself in the clubhouse. Actually, I take that back. There's a couple of people here. Amy Caballero, one of her very good friends, is here. And I actually am curious as to who Tasman is friends with. Okay, so she does not like Jessica. She's friends with Max, which is a little bit unusual because I would imagine them not to get on, especially as Max doesn't get on with a lot of people. She hates Joel, that's unusual. She is lovers with Tommy, or in fact, no, they're just friends now. Okay, they had a thing, but they don't have any more. All right, so with the other people, I think they're just on friendly terms. It's actually quite nice that she's friends with a lot of team bro. And of course, these are her parents here. So I think what we're gonna do is I am going to get her to talk to Amy Cavallaro because I want these two to go to the Gothic Nightmares Club and I want them to go and give me a little bit of trouble. And I think Amy Cavallaro is just the right person to ask because Amy Cavallaro is trouble. She really, really is. In fact, I haven't given her a proper introduction yet, but she really is. In fact, she is not the meanest of the mean girls, but she can be quite a little trouble, troublesome person. She does all these really strange things that Tasman or Courtney just wouldn't have the guts to do. Amy Caballero is a little bit feisty. I think that's the best way to describe her. But yeah, I'm gonna get Tasman out to the club and it's late, it's perfect. They can camouflage properly. I would love to get them in some sort of camo gear as well and go and sneak up on the gothic nightmares. I might actually just do that. I might actually just change her outfit. Let's see what she's got. Maybe she's got a uh, party, what's the party one? I don't know, I'd imagine it's all pink. It's all pink. All right, let's just go. Because it looks like there are just loads of people arriving at the club anyway. All right, maybe we should bring Courtney as well so Courtney and Amy Caballero can go. She wouldn't want Jane to go because she didn't think that Jane would want to be involved with this. So that's what they're not gonna do. She's gonna go to the Mortray house though. So we arrived at the clubhouse and it's a little bit awkward because the girls are actually here so there is no way that we could have sneaked up on them. But Tasman is feeling hot. As in, I think she's gonna light something on fire because that would be pretty interesting. Now I don't actually want the girls to talk to them. That is a little bit odd. So we're not gonna do that. In fact, they'd probably just be asking the girls why they were here in the first place. Because I don't see the other girls as being nasty spirits or anything, but I think that Tasman would actually be quite nasty in the way that she would maybe want to light the clubhouse on fire. They're falling out already though. Well, what if we added fuel and just kept adding more fuel to it? What's gonna happen? Because if it sets somebody on fire, that would be, that would be really, really bad Tasman. I hope that nothing happens like that, but of course you just never know. I don't even know if any of this stuff can actually catch on fire. That is also pretty worrying. Okay, so I've just done a little cheat and the girls have all gone to bed. And I think that the Gothic Nightmares are, I mean, ready to go into their tents. I don't know where Amy Caballero or Courtney Tomlin's gone, but maybe while they were out, Tasman would try to set this clubhouse on fire. And I don't know how she's gonna do it. I mean, I don't really know, but we're gonna have to just try it because I did actually do a little cheat, put a cheat on, which is the burning love cheat. So she is more prone to setting things on fire for the next three hours. Now, I have to move some of this stuff around because I actually want it to work because I would love for Tasman to do something that mischievous. And of course, Amy Cavallero would probably be the one to pull it off and maybe it would get pinned on her, I don't know. It's just really odd though how the Gothic Nightmares have just gone to bed and trusted these girls. But what's even more strange is these girls are just running off all the time. But yeah, I really, really hope that we will be able to set something on fire. That would be just the best thing to do. And I just really hope it works. So I'm gonna fast forward time a little bit Especially as the girls are in bed, so they don't even know anything. Oh my gosh, Blondie discovered the fire. Tasman, you're on fire! No! Oh my gosh! No, she's <laughs> she's done it. Oh my goodness, she is the worst. Okay, someone needs to extinguish her quick. Can she just extinguish herself? She needs to <laughs> she needs to extinguish herself. This is crazy. Tasman, 
Why are you on fire? All right, so she's probably extraordinarily embarrassed and that didn't really work. In fact, her whole plan got foiled, but she did actually sabotage that tent. And I don't know if anybody was in that tent, but that would be pretty tragic if that happened. I didn't actually think they were. She's feeling pretty tense though, but from a look perspective, I don't actually think that the other girls knew what was going on. So they only just ran out their tent. Uh, Tasman was on fire. They might have not even known the Tasman was trying to blow up their whole clubhouse or at least set fire to it. All right, we're gonna go back to Tasman's house and Tasman is going to have a sleepover. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna travel with the other two girls and we're gonna go back to Kingswood Manor. So this is Kingswood Manor and I'm actually just gonna show you the house because I did a speed build of it a really long time ago. In fact, it's one of my really, really old builds. But this is where Tasman lives and I don't think that we've ever been here before or at least I can't remember that we have. But yeah, this is her house. It's a pretty fancy house. Strangely though, it didn't actually use the Windenburg expansion pack to use it. So if you don't have some small get together, if you want a Tudor mansion, then this could be it. This is her home though. So she's invited the other girls round and maybe she would also invite Jane round and just not tell her what the original plan was. So invite to hang out at current lot. She's gonna do that. And I think as well, I don't know if her family's here. All right, her mum's asleep upstairs. And um, what's the father doing? Oh, her father's just downstairs watching television. Well, maybe he can put the fire on. This is, what's his name? I forgot what his name is. <laughs> I don't know, but he really hates Jack Sparrow. Stephen Kingsley, oh my gosh, look at his French with Jack Sparrow. They despise each other. Oh, and he hates the Gothic Nightmares. I don't blame him though, he also hates Jessica Mortray. And I don't know, maybe that's a family feud going way, way, way back. I cannot believe that poor Tasma got set on fire. <laughs> it was such a good plan as well. She was gonna just burn down that whole clubhouse so that the girls would have absolutely nothing. And that would be a really, really mean, evil thing to do. And it could also have potentially got the police involved, which would have been a completely different story altogether. But Tasman is an evil character. She is just lucky that the other girls, uh, the gothic nightmares, just weren't there to see what was happening because I think that if they knew that Tasman was intentionally trying to sabotage their clubhouse, then they would, they would be mad. They would be so mad at her. All right, so I wanna know what she's doing now. Maybe she's just talking to her frogs. I think that she does see her pets like anybody else would just see a cat or a bunny or a dog. I don't know. For me, when I'm stressed or when something bad's happened, I always talk to my dog about it. Even if he doesn't understand me, I just, I just do. So yeah, maybe that would be how it is with her frog. Maybe that would be Tasman's emotional side. The fact that she could actually really love animals and that's her soft side if you like and that would be so interesting if you were to ever get like a sims for pets expansion pack i can imagine tasma kingsley having about 10 pomerarians in her house <laughs> just because i don't know i think chihuahuas pomerarians just anything like that and i can say that because i've got a small dog i love small dogs they are such cute breeds as well my dog is actually a blanc Vetna. he's a russian breed of dog not many people know what that is it's a little bit strange how Amy Cavallero is sat in her dad's office. <laughs> Maybe this is a meeting place. Maybe they're plotting their next thing and I don't know what's gonna happen here to be honest, but it's a little bit of a shame how they left Jane out. I actually feel really bad for Jane being left out of this because maybe she wouldn't even want to be included because maybe this is just a step too far for her. Being involved with this sort of plan is really, really damaging to a person. But I think that she'd still like to be invited to these things. And I don't know, maybe she's not in the clique as much as she'd want to be in the clique. Tasman Kingsley has also got a few places in the club. I don't know if there's anybody that we'd want to recruit in. I don't think there is. I just don't see it myself. Maybe Alison Angel could make an appearance, Arthur Angel's sister. How old is she though? I don't know if she's a young adult and we only really allow teens in the group. So maybe that wouldn't happen. I think what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna switch back to Jane at the Pomegranate's house because we haven't really seen Jane yet. And we are going to leave these three girls to think about their next master plan. So we are back with the family and Dylan is wearing a really, really strange hat. I don't know why he's wearing a hat, but I definitely wanted to change his outfit maybe into athletic. Yeah, that's more like Dylan. And Pilar as well. As nice as she looks in her uniform, it's super formal. So I'm gonna get her out of that outfit maybe into an everyday outfit, maybe everyday one, 
Maybe that's actually what she always wears though. In fact, maybe I'll try another one. Apologies if you can hear that. That was a flipping tractor going past my house. Yeah, they have been going past all day, every day. Oh my gosh. It's so strange though, because I always look through my windows when they go past the tractor, it's so horrid. All right, so every day, maybe every day four, let's try that. Oh, I actually like the previous one. What was I doing that? All right, every day, every day three, I think it was. That's actually a really cute outfit. I mean, maybe it's a little bit immature for her, but still. I actually quite like it and I think as well maybe she would want to wear some nice things around the house it looks like the weather would be quite hot at the moment I don't know it's hot where I am at the moment so maybe it would be hot there too seeing as Windenberg is supposed to be based off a German or English inspired world Dylan is going to the toilet though so nothing interesting going on there and I think for Jessica will try okay she is napping I think she'd probably just be better off going to sleep just getting the full benefits from sleep. And what's Jane doing? Let's see what Jane's doing at the moment. She's feeling tense from insecurity. Oh my gosh, is it from, I don't know if it's from Tommy. I also don't know if it's from the fakes. Maybe she senses something. Maybe she texted Tasman and Tasman didn't reply. Maybe she was a little bit short with Jane and she just said, actually, I have things to do. Can't meet you today, sorry. I don't know. But we're gonna go and probably send Tommy a little text. So maybe chat, she could chat to him. If she's feeling jealous, maybe that would help her out a little bit. In fact, maybe we could, oh, he's sleeping. Oh yeah, it's 4 a.m. <laughs> it's 4 a.m. and why isn't Scarlett in bed? I know I always say that, but she really, really does need to sleep. She does. She's a young child for goodness sake. Children should get tired a little bit more than adults. I actually think it would be a really cute thing for children in The Sims 4 to automatically just get a little bit tired. Maybe after about eight o'clock. I would love that personally. I don't know why we still have that humongous thing in our back garden. I need to get rid of that. Apologies for leaving that in. I will try and take it out in future episodes. And there is still progress with the house. In fact, a speed build will be coming up soon of Dylan's new home. And I don't know, I think that will be really interesting and I'm hoping that a lot of you will like that. It's a lot more modern. It's a little bit futuristic, white. Uh, it's a beach house to give you a little bit of a hint of what it is. Yeah, pretty nice stuff. And these two are just chilling out on the sofa. That is really lovely as well. So he's gonna give her a little compliment, brighten her day. And also, I think that I'd want him to maybe tell her that she looks nice because she's wearing something different. She's actually making an effort around the house. So he's gonna do that. He's gonna say, oh, compliment outfit. Yeah, that is the perfect thing to do. It's a little bit early now. So I think that Jane would try Tommy again. <laughs> Not even thinking about the time. Not even thinking about it. Invites to current lock. Just, just chat. She would just chat. Because I think after six o'clock, it's actually fine. Okay, he's still sleeping. I doubt he's sleeping. Maybe she'd be the super overprotective girlfriend and actually go around his house. Would she be that crazy? I think we should. Actually, mm, I think we should wait till morning because I actually think it's going to be more fun to bring Tommy here. Especially as it is going to be a tiny bit awkward with Jessica Mortray. As I can't imagine that Jay knows that Jessica actually went out with Tommy the other time and they actually flirted a little bit together. They actually have a romantic bar. It's slight, but he's still a romantic interest, which of course is going to absolutely suck for Jane if anything happens. But you just never know in this LP and I really don't know what's going to happen. I don't plan what's going to happen either. I just get into it. I just have maybe a couple of minutes before I start and I think to myself, actually, what would be really fun? If I did it in this episode, what can I do? And yeah, that is how I plan things. So it's nearly 6 a.m. and I think that we can invite him round. So we are gonna do that. We're gonna jump straight into this inviting round stuff. And he's going to hopefully come round because it's 6 a.m. It's not too early, is it, Jane? Okay, it's very early. I would never invite anybody round at 6 a.m. because that's insane. He's still sleeping. She's feeling flirty though, so he's gonna have to come round. All right, well, we're gonna send him a flirty text and see if that makes any difference. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't, I don't know. I don't actually know what time the Sims actually sleep into. I'm not sure. In fact, I'm guessing it's seven because that would make sense. All right, well, she can send him a flirty text. It's Sunday, I mean, come on, we don't even have a school. He'll be up at this time anyway. I actually really like this stained glass window. I never noticed it, but I really like it now. He's gonna be right over, yes. Fantastic, all right. 
Well, <laughs> that was quick. Okay, well, it just so happened that when she's feeling flirty, he's right over. Yeah, of course, of course. All right, so he's gonna knock on the door and I actually want Jessica or Trey to come and answer it. So, oh, complain about love life. Friendly or romantic interaction. I don't know, would she? Oh, I don't know. Jessica or Trey's really, really complicated. I'm trying to assess her character, but honestly, it's so difficult because Jessica and I are absolutely nothing alike. She is... <laughs> She is just super flirty and promiscuous and I don't know, I'm not one of those people. I'm actually a really moral person. I would never do what she's doing. I just wouldn't. It's just a personal thing. I don't know. I always feel like it's wrong. But they are talking together downstairs and Jane is actually upstairs feeling flirty. But Jessica's actually the one speaking to him. And I don't think that she would be doing it anymore to be nasty to Jane. I actually think that what Jessica's doing here is she's got herself into a little bit of a situation where she initially started flirting and sending texts to Tommy because she was trying to be a little bit nasty to Jane and try and get one over on her because she's quite a jealous person herself. But I actually think when it comes to it now, I don't think what she's doing is actually trying to be nasty anymore. I think that she is just going with how she feels. She's a ruthless person and she doesn't really understand relationships. She just doesn't get it. This is a really odd view with Pilar behind on the toilet. Apologies for that. I just, I didn't even plan it. See, things happen just unplanned. But I think that for her, I don't know. I don't even think that she would be understanding how she feels at this point. And it's a real shame, but she's gonna get some food and she is going to cook something. Maybe some scrambled eggs, uh, single serving, party size. Yeah, why not? And um, while she's doing that, I actually want Jane to maybe give him a kiss, oh, passionate kiss, right in front of her mum. That's a bit awkward. <laughs> and her mum's got a phone out as well. Oh my gosh. Pilot is everywhere with these two. <laughs> this just looks so odd. Why would she do that? Oh, okay, this is the thing. She looks about half the size of Tommy in body mass. I mean, Tommy's very muscly, so I absolutely doubt that Jane would be able to do that. That was so strange. All right, well, they're talking now, and I don't really know where it's going. He's feeling confident, though. He's feeling very, very confident. Well, maybe we should just speak to him. It's the morning, and oh, profess undying love. That's quite cute. And all right, maybe she would. What's she doing? She's feeling insecure. I hope that that insecurity does go away. She wants to also share some insecurities and she also wants to be friendly with him. Well, she's being friendly with him now, is she not? Jessica Mortray is in the kitchen, but I actually think that this is gonna probably kick off in the next part. So we're just gonna see what happens, but I will see you all for part 14. I really hope you've enjoyed this part. If you've got any suggestions as to what you'd like to see in the next part, then please let me know in the comments below and I will speak to you all soon.